Welcome, Kevin and I are back with another episode of Financial 15, the show where we try to provide some financial knowledge, something hopefully you can use to improve your situation, do all of that in 15 minutes or less. Today, we're talking about rates of return, specifically a time-weighted rate of return versus a money-weighted rate of return. When would you encounter the two? What are the differences between the two? We're going to tackle all of that today. Yes, we're bringing you another educational video that we think is relevant for everybody so they can start to figure out exactly what their portfolios look like and how to read them. So if you get a chance, please go to our website at beckeror.com to find this video and others that we have or like us on Facebook or visit our YouTube channel where you can download or look at anything you want to see from there. Okay, to start this off, time worse, <laughs> time weighted versus money weighted, Clint. This is a big topic. A lot of people don't really understand it. Why don't we start off and figure out what is the difference and what are we talking about? It is a complicated topic where if you get into the mathematics of it, and I think the perception for most investors that you have a rate of return and that's it. How much money do I make? End of story. That's actually not the case. There's multiple rates of return. There's different ways to calculate it. And there's different instances where you'd encounter those varying rates of return. We're not going to get into the mathematics of all that. This is not a, an academic course. Uh, we're going to try to hit the high level so people can understand the most frequent ways that are used to calculate the rates of return and when you'd likely encounter them. And the two most frequent are time-weighted rates of return, money-weighted rates of return. And there are some pretty big differences between the two, aren't there, Kevin? Yeah, there very much is so. And as, as you mentioned, we're not getting we're not mathematicians here to be able to figure out what the exact numbers are. But we do want to clarify what the big differences are between the two of them. And I guess the easiest way is we want to look at cash flows to start with. Mm -hmm. In a time weighted return, we're not worried about what the cash flow is that's coming on. It really doesn't have that much of a bearing on it. It's more of what's the time frame that we're dealing with over here. Whereas the money weighted return, we want to deal exactly with those cash flows. Yeah. If you're collecting cash flow over the course of the year, you want that added into your rate of return. That does have an effect on everything that's going on. So that's one of the big ones that we need to clarify and make sure people mm -hmm. know the differences are. What's the objective of this, Clint? Yeah, different tools for different jobs. So the time weighted return ignores all the cash flows. If you add money, you take money out. That's not relevant for a time weighted rate of return. The goal there is really to manage or pardon me, to evaluate the performance of an investment manager, evaluate the performance of an investment product. That's the intent. The money weighted rate of return, the goal is to deliver a personal investment performance. To really try to answer the question, how much money did I make? That's a money weighted rate of return. So you have an investment, you put 50 bucks a month in, and then you take some money out down the road. All of those ins and outs will be included in a money weighted return, and it'll deliver a, a personal investment performance. All of that will be ignored in a time weighted rate of return <laughs> to give you something that will have more of an impact, more of a, a tool to help evaluate the manager of that investment product. So different objectives, different tools, uh, and then they're not always comparable, are they, Kevin? No, I mean, that, that's the biggest factor to try and figure out comparisons. I mean, typically, a time-weighted return is something that managers can can uh, take a look at and compare one to the other. So if you're dealing with a mutual fund, you can deal with two equity mutual funds and compare them mm -hmm. on a time-weighted return. You really can't do that on the money-weighted return because, as you've mentioned, this is a personal performance. It's somebody's individual performance and what they did. You can't compare that to the equity market because there's a variety of different things that they may have there in a cash flow yeah. sort of scenario. So compatibility time weighted, yes. Compatibility money weighted, I would say no. These are things that are definitely different in the way that you look at things. And it, it, again, you can get two completely different numbers on your return based on this. <laughs> now, is there anything else we need to add on these sort of scenarios? Yeah, we'll go through a couple examples to deliver the point you just made. You can get very differing answers uh, depending on the formula here and the situation. But just a, a quick reminder here, folks, it's different tools for different jobs. So don't think about what's the best rate of return, the best formula. I like to think about it in this sense. You've got a hammer and you have a saw. What's the best tool? Well, it depends on the job you're trying to do. They do very <laughs> different things. You would never think a hammer and a saw are interchangeable. Same kind of idea here when it comes to rates of return different tools for different jobs. That time-weighted rate of return ignores all the cash flows, really there to deliver something that's comparable, something that can help evaluate the performance of an investment product or a manager. Money-weighted rate of return, really trying to answer the question as an investor, how much money did I make? And it'll include all those personal items, all the ins and outs of the account. So two different tools for two very different jobs. We'll go through an example here 
to help uh, yes. hammer home that concept of really how different these rates of return could be. But uh, the cash flow is key. So I'll quickly mention that if the cash flows are identical, you have $100,000 in January and you don't add a penny, you don't put any money in, you don't take any money out. Well, the time weighted formula and the money weighted formula will probably give you a similar rate of return. It'll be largely yes. similar. It's just when there's ins and outs, that's when the two really start to vary. And we have an example here to help uh, with that concept. Why don't you walk us through the example, Kevin? Yeah, basically, I mean, this is the easiest way to try and figure out exactly what we're talking about when we deal with time weighted versus money weighted, because people see this all the time and they may not understand exactly where the concept's done. But if we look at this example, if we use December 1st, 2015, we invested a thousand at and bought a thousand units of stock ABC at a buck. A year later, we do the exact same thing, a thousand units, but now we're buying at two dollars. And then if we mm -hmm. go to 2017 and we sell those 2,000 shares at a buck 25, now is when we get to that big difference between time weighted and money weighted. Absolutely. In this scenario, we paid more money. We've actually lost $500 over the two years. But when we do it on a time weighted basis, we're looking at a return of 11.88%. The reason is our initial buy was a thousand at one dollar. We sold at 125. There's the 11.8% return. But we know that we had more shares over that time frame, and by the time we actually sold something, we've lost money. So our money-weighted mm -hmm. return with the money in and out is now down 12.77%. So you can see the huge difference that can happen just based on your ideology. Is there anything else here that we should really emphasize to people? Yeah, well, just to reiterate there, the money-weighted returns looking at the cash flow. So you had $1,000 in year one, yeah. you added 2,000 in year two, so you got a total of 3,000 by the end of that second year. The portfolio is worth 2,500 bucks. So you lost 500 bucks. You put 3,000 in, you got 2,500 out. Over that two years, it worked out to a loss of 12.77% per year. Now the time weighted, keep in mind, ignores all the cash flows. It doesn't care when the money went in, when the money went out, all of that's ignored. Uh, and what it looks at is just it, the stock is worth a buck in year one. By the end of year two, it is worth a buck 25. That's a gain. And in this yep. case, a gain of 11.8% Per year. So it ignores the cash flows and just looks at the linking the time periods, in this case, linking the two years, going from a dollar to a buck 25 by the end of year two. Of course, as an investor, the cash flows matter in terms of you trying to answer the question, how much did money did I make or did I lose? Well, the cash flows matter when you buy, when you sell all the ins and outs, that certainly makes a difference. And not to get in too much into the nitty gritty, but how the time periods are weighted in a money weighted rate of return has to do with the size of the portfolio. So if you only had a thousand dollars in year one, and then you add more money and you've got three thousand dollars by year two, that second year is going to have more weight in the formula. Again, we won't get into the mathematics, but just the more money, the more importance it has in a money weighted formula. So the loss in year two has more significance in the overall result. Uh, so some pretty big differences between the two. The cash flow is the key item there, and you can see it does result in differing weights of return. And again, a reminder that money weighted formula, not comparable. If your neighbor uh, invested a dollar and then he didn't add anything else in year two, he's going to have a completely different experience than you. Those cash flows matter. And unfortunately, that means the money weighted rate of return is not going to be comparable. Uh, the time weighted formula is the one that can actually be compared uh, to other folks, if you're trying to measure it, that's more apples to apples. I know we're repeating it here, but it's a complicated concept. We want to make sure everyone understands. Anything else you wanted to add on this topic, Kevin? Yeah, it's also the reason that when you take a look at your portfolio as an individual, it may be different than the return off of mm -hmm. an individual security that you're holding. I mean, if the mutual fund made this percentage and all of a sudden you're looking at yours going, well, I didn't, there's the big difference. We want to count yeah. your entire money-weighted portfolio. This is what you've got. Whereas on the mutual fund side, they're only interested in year over year. They don't count the cash flow in that. So that's why you could have some people saying, well, how come this happened to the, the uh, investment that I'm holding, but I don't have the same sort of return. These are some of the big reasons for why that happens. And it's important to know that and how these things are reported. So that's the next yeah. point that I would add is what we've got dealing with time-weighted and money-weighted. Yeah. And that's a perfect example. You mentioned mutual funds. It also applies to ETFs, to stocks, to bonds. You could really yeah. replace mutual fund with any security in that sentence and it would exactly. still apply. So it's an important concept. We'll quickly finish here by looking at how regulators have uh, regulated the use of these different rates of return and where investors might encounter each of them. So a money-weighted rate of return, likely you'll see that on your portfolio mm -hmm. statements. The way the regulations work is that finance firms have to deliver a rate of return to a client at least annually. I think all firms have to at least do an annual summary, uh, but it's done with the <laughs> money-weighted formula. So it's going to be your personal rate of return based on how many 
ins and outs in your account, which makes sense. The regulators yeah. want you as a financial firm to deliver to the client how much money that client made or lost. The money weighted formula makes a lot of sense in that particular case. Keep in mind, though, money weighted, not comparable. So you take no. your statement, you go to your neighbor and you look at their statement. You're not comparing apples to apples. That's really kind of a waste of time, uh, understanding the mathematics of it. So it, keep in mind, portfolio statements, that's when you'd find the money weighted rate of return. Where would someone encounter a time weighted rate of return, Kevin? Well, a time weighted rate of return is basically what you're going to see on the fact sheets or the prospectuses from different funds or different companies or different ETFs, as we've mentioned. They do this on a time weighted basis. What have they got on their one year return, their three year return, mm -hmm. their 10 year return? And that will give you what those numbers are. Again, these are not individually processed sort of scenarios like the one that was mentioned before. Time or money weightage tends to be very individualistic, as Clint said, can't compare neighbor to neighbor. But to be able to compare on a mutual fund basis or an ETF basis, an equity fund to an equity fund, you have to have comparables. And these are the ones that we'll look at it on a time weighted basis. It's listed there so that you can see exactly how they've done and how they've done on a year, two year, five year, whatever the case may be. So that yeah. would be where a time weighted preference would be much more so than a money weighted one. Absolutely. So that's where you're likely to find and regulators have stepped in to make sure that firms are using these in the appropriate manner. So your portfolio statements answer the question, how much money did it make? Money weighted return. You look at online on Morningstar, Globe Fund, any of these other products or on a fact sheet, you'll find your time weighted rates of return. Complicated concept. Uh, I appreciate uh, not everyone is going to get into all the details there. But if you do have questions on this topic or any others, you can always find us on chatwithclintonandkevin.com. That's a part of our website. You can fill in the form there. More than happy to answer any questions you might have. Any parting comments for folks, Kevin? No, I think that's perfect. You said it just great. This topic has a lot of different details to it. Please feel free to reach out to us. We're more than happy to figure it out for you on a personal mm -hmm. basis or letting you know exactly what it is on a fun comparable basis. That's all I have to say. Perfect. Everyone take care and stay safe.